Okay. Cold start attempt 1969. Okay. Cold start attempt 1969. Cold start attempt 1969. Ford C700 has not been started in, let's say, almost nine months. And last time it started, it was only running for about 10 minutes because it ran totally out of fuel. So, and got to put a battery in it. Put the battery there, the gas can. Took the battery out of my old truck and see if we can get it started. I don't know if I can lift this one handed. But uh, putting a battery in a cab over is a little bit more challenging than just popping a hood. Oh, hold on a second. Cool. Let's see. As you can see, Whole well, cab has to go up. It really isn't too hard because these two springs down here help you lift it up. Um, and then there's these two safety hooks and then the main lock on the back of the cab. And they just go right up. You pull that main lock, release it, put it in the up position, and then you pull the bottom one and the top one if you've never done an old cab over while you're lifting up okay we'll hook this battery up Hopefully that's on there good enough. I think I have some starting fluid over here. Let's see. Well, there's a crushed can of it. Is there a good can somewhere? That's empty. go into my mess of a garage and see if we can find some starting fluid. Oh boy. Let's see. Oh, he right there. The door. So, I can't really show you, but I can let you hear, it's pretty empty. I'm hoping this probably three and a half, four gallons of fuel is enough to, yeah, it probably will be, to prime it. Hold on a second. People want government health care. Government can't even build a gas can that works right. We want government health care. So I'm put this fuel in and save a little bit for the uh, prime the carburetor hopefully. Put some starting fluid in it. We'll see if we can get it to start. I'll save you the 20 minutes while this government fuel can uh, does its thing. Okay, I put most of that in the uh, fuel tank. So we got a little bit more in here. Let's put uh, some in here. See if this will stay here. Surely that's more than enough. 
Yes, it's still tilted. Oh, my goodness. Okay. It's in neutral now. It's a pain in the ass while the cab's up. Oh, gotta pull the choke, too. Choke is... Which one? I got the key for it. Well, apparently that battery's not charged enough to start it. Boy. Unless it was still in gear. Let me pause it. Okay, sometimes this truck's hard to tell if it's in gear. And I'll show you why. So that's in gear. That's all the play while it's in gear. So... That's neutral. Let's see if it starts. No, oh, battery's too low. Okay. Well, we gotta get the battery charger and I'll get back with you. And we'll make attempt number two to start this thing. Has been quite some time. But, uh, anyway. Everything in this truck's quite interesting. We got windshield wipers that run off of air pressure. The vent is literally just a cable that runs a flap that opens the whole floorboard up. See if you can. Can't really see it, but there's a flap that goes all the way across the floor from one side to the other. And that controls that. That actually controls the throttle for like if you had a PTO, you could press the throttle and pull that out and now the throttle's still on and then the choke of course um this truck is about as simple as they come there's uh no accessories remove that there never was a radio you had an ashtray and that's not even a cigarette lighter i don't know what that went to you had an ashtray and that was it I guess they figured if you were hardcore enough to drive this truck uh, as a daily, you were hardcore enough to light a cigar while you were driving down the road with a uh, lighter or matches, probably. Probably all wood matches back then. 1969. Um, I'm not sure what that button there does I think that is for the windshield washer fluid you press that and it would spray the windshield washer fluid uh, high beam switch is on the floor um, what else oh so it's a two-speed rear end here so you got five speed it runs like a four speed because first gear is way way low granny you would go second third then you'd flip high range, second, third again. Then you'd go low range, third, high range, third, low range, fourth, high range, fourth. And that's how you would go through the gears if you were pulling something heavy. Um, I have never pulled anything heavy enough to need to go into the low range, high range of the uh, second and third gear. Usually I just run second, third, and then I go over here to... Uh, well, what says fourth, but I call it third because, again, granny doesn't count. And uh, then you would run that low range, hit fifth low range, and then that would be about 40 miles an hour. You flip that up, and then you hit fourth high and fifth high uh, as your top. This truck will go 65, 70 miles an hour 
uh, with no load, but it will not do that loaded. It will only go about 55 to 60 miles an hour with a load. And mainly that's just because the rear end ratio, I think, is like a 536, some crazy gear ratio. And this truck only has 101 horsepower, uh, which back then they thought was fine for pulling 36,000 pounds. Uh, that's what this truck's rated for. Uh, it was originally a roadway truck. You can actually still see the roadway orange on it where the paint is peeling. Um, and... Uh, this truck was wrecked because um, I have the paperwork from the original auction. This truck was wrecked and uh, they decided not to use it and they just only used it as a yard vehicle. And that's why these miles are actually accurate, 142,000 miles, which is really low for a uh, semi truck. Um, but anyway, it uh, I probably put 40 of those thousand miles on over myself. I drove the hell out of this thing. In high school, I thought this was the best thing in the world. I drove this thing everywhere. And, uh, well, I even went to drive-thrus. And it's just it's just barely short enough. You can actually fit through, like, a McDonald's drive-thru in it. And uh, it's pretty funny watching them reach up to try to give you stuff because your window is way up there as compared to the ground. Um... But, and this thing turns sharper than a Geo Metro because its wheelbase is so short and those front wheels turn a long ways. It's really hard to drive uh, because it's manual steering, manual everything. There's no power assist on anything. So, I had to be pretty strong to drive it. I'm not in very good shape now and I promise you driving it is a nightmare. I'd much rather drive my pickup over there. I mean... Short trip, sure, this is fun, but boy, is it a lot of work. Anyway, I will cut away. I'm going to put a battery charger on it and wait maybe an hour, and then we'll try to start it up again. <clears throat> well, before charging, it says battery voltage 11.8. Hit charge, and sure enough, it says it's about 25% charged. So... I will come back when that thing gets up to 100%. So off camera, I put about two gallons of coolant in it and probably about three on the ground. This has a surge, surge tank that's it's really not like the same as a surge tank because it's meant to be full all the time. And uh, it's you can see with a big radiator hose right to the top of the thermostat um, the original radiator was a brass radiator that was in really bad shape which is why it now has an aluminum radiator that uh, was meant, meant for a Mustang but it seems to fit we had to engineer some brackets a little bit but not a whole lot and uh now, we'll put this guy here on um, engine start. And it's been about 10 minutes, because like I said, all I did was put coolant in it. Which it was about two gallons low. And I don't think we ever did properly burp the system out after we uh, put the coolant in it the first time is why it was low. But anyway, let's see if it starts now. There it goes. And that's how smooth this thing runs. It's always run like this. We just ran through what was in the primer. And also, the accelerator pump's leaking. That's awesome.
got no fuel coming from the pump yet. It's just running off what's in the float, so I'm hoping it gets pumped up here in a second. Oh, we're getting a little bit of fuel in there. I'd rev it up and get it to go, but like I said, there's still no fuel in that filter. And there's a little bit of fuel in there, but I don't think it's enough yet. I think we're still running off all that fuel I dumped on the car, we'll see. <laughs> yep, see I just dumped the floats, that's why I didn't want to do that. Boy, I gotta fix that seal, you see that leaking? I don't know if it's accelerating anything inside or if it's just spraying it on the side of the block. Who knows? And there goes my battery. So, that was, what would you call that, semi-successful start. Let's uh, let it charge a little bit and uh, maybe I'll put some more fuel down the carb. And uh, we'll try again in a minute. Again, except this time maybe with a shot of uh, go-go juice here. Figure that's probably enough. Well, that would be a bad starter connection right there, or battery connection. Try that again. Oh, nothing. It's always lovely when you're dealing with poor quality cables and bad grounds. probably need to be cleaned really badly Oh, well, I'm going to mess with those cables and we'll try again until they fail the temperature. Let's try again. Well, 
There you have it, she's running. That wubba 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 sound you hear is the air compressor building up the air. Once the air pressure gets full, it'll stop making that noise. One thing I do have to do is you can see that line underneath the fuel or underneath the air uh, compressor. I think it has grease or is partially clogged because if you get up too high at RPM, eventually this uh, air compressor starts leaking oil really bad. And the reason for that is because the uh, oil, the, the it's actually oiled by the engine. Um, and so the higher RPM, the more oil it feeds it. And if it can't drain, well, then it overflows. But uh, before the alternator wasn't working, but I'm wondering if that wasn't just a bad connection. I think it says checking. Now it says the alternator's bad. I'm guessing, so we recently put a starter in it and bypassed this starter solenoid because it's a Chevy style starter, so it doesn't need it. Um, I'm guessing that has something to do with it. The alternator's right down there and I think the other wire, the alternator comes up to right here. And that wire looks really shit condition. So I'm guessing that has something to do with it. I think the voltage regulator is over there on the other side of the battery. Great place for it, I guess. Um, either that or I'm not sure what that box is up there. That might be a voltage regulator too. I'll have to get in there and look at it. But anyway, you can see that it runs. I'm going to put this back on charge since the alternator is not working. Let's let it build up the battery. Maybe uh, maybe we'll get it out for a test drive if I can figure out why the alternator's not working. And assuming it doesn't overheat again. Last time I think it overheated because there wasn't enough water in the coolant, or wasn't enough coolant in the radiator, however you want to say that. Um, and I don't think it was getting too, there was no water getting to the thermostat so it couldn't open and close. So I'm going to uh, top it off after it's run here for a bit. And hopefully that burps it out a little bit. Um, other than that, that would be a big red cold start. 1969 Ford C700. Still got the choke on. I gotta shut the choke off. There we go. That's choke off. I will leave you at that.